Hello everyone, this is JD Calderon and this is Indie Comics Explained and yet again I brought another fantastic group of independent comic book creators and we're going to be talking about independent comics. So here we go. But first, before that, please hit like, hit subscribe, share out the video, let everybody know we're here and hit that notification bell because you never know. You might want to know when I'm coming on, right? And one last thing, I got two Kickstarters going on. The Oswald Chronicles currently running on the wings of Deidre and Tall Tales of Peacekeepers. So you can go check that out. Thank you so much. Help support the channel and the creators <laughs> and my various artists that live overseas. You know, they, they want to eat. So we got to get them some money anyway. So without further ado, let's bring in the guy who got absolutely no credit this week. But, you know, give, give me one second. I'm hitting like, then I'm hitting subscribe and I'm looking for <laughs> where's the notification bell. I, I, I can't I can't. Find it. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> what up, Streamland? I am J.D. Rosario. I am the Grease. To Calderon's wheel. I am the cheese <laughs> from beneath his feet. I am the <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Go ahead, say it. You're the mayonnaise to the bread. I don't know. <laughs> uh, what the, what's up, everybody? I've been publishing comic books for over 15 years, uh, losing money left and right, uh, trying to find a way to stay afloat, and <laughs> finding my way here to share all of that information with you and hopefully. You can save a buck or two. Nice, nice. Mr. Joe. Yes, I am making my return here. I am Joe D. McPhee. I'm president of a CGC studio, uh, contributing writer to Comics Unlimited, uh, creator of three different comic book titles of which you could get either on Comixology or on our company website. And pretty much I'm just here to talk comics. Nice. Mr. Lanning. Hey, how's it going? Hi, I'm C. Michael Lanning, uh, independent graphic translator. Uh, does some StreamYard stuff here and there. Uh, I've done work for Arrow Comics and Calico of Shard. The upcoming Hazard Productions Doghouse. And uh, who knows what else is coming up, right? So mm -hmm. just, I'm just happy to be here. I thought we were gonna miss JD. I thought we were gonna miss Rosario today, and I was like, "Oh, he showed up." So I'm here, bro. Yeah, I'm come here. On. here. I'm that glad I brought my hat. I know. I see. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. You got the hat. <laughs> How you doing, Rob? Please. How you doing? Hi, I'm uh, I'm Robert Malteri, and I'm the creator and writer of uh, Nightwolf and the uh, spinoff series Snowpaw. Uh, Nightwolf is about a young man who finds out that he's born a werewolf, gets thrown into a supernatural war against demons, witches, vampires, other werewolves. And uh, Snowpaw is uh, Nightwolf's mentor during his series, but her series is her origin story in the 19th century Scotland, 200 years in the past. Nice. All right, cool. Give me a second. I'm coming back, gentlemen. I'm sorry. Randy. Hey, Randy Stone here. I'm a publisher of Altruist Comics. I've got several books under my belt, Death in Comics, Crime Pays, The Sensational Swan, and Bullet. And the brand new Bullet Adventures is on Kickstarter right now. So we'll talk a lot about that. Yes. Thanks. Carlos, how you doing, man? Carlos, can you hear us? Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, nice to meet everybody. Um, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Uh, do you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. So oh, okay, well, hey, very nice to meet you guys. I'm um, I'm Carlos with uh, my company's Wicked Comics. Uh, we have uh, you know, over 200 characters in our uh, in our library. Uh, some of our our characters are Clown Man, uh, Kill Switch, or some, uh, just to name a few. But uh, yeah, we're pretty much everywhere. Uh, in uh, Barnes and Nobles, uh, Amazon, uh, Indie Planet, and. And anywhere else where you know where comic books are available, so uh, you know, really happy to be here and uh, you know, just say hi to all the the fans out there and the the wicked fans watching, and it was nice to meet you guys. All right, cool. All right, guys. So, you know, it's funny I didn't get to talk to everybody before we started. So the first half of the show is just all questions, then the second half of the show we will be going over your campaigns. But first, mm -hmm. before we get to that part. I got a quick and easy question for everybody, oh. right? Quick and easy. How many campaigns are you planning on running this year? And it doesn't matter. Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Crowdfunder. Uh, what's the other one? So, back um, there you go. Back a kid. Back to five they now, right? Yeah. 
Oh, there. What is that? Is, there's high. another one. Uh, what is that other one too to Zoop. raise funds? Uh, Zoop. Zoop. I, there's so yeah, many out there. I forgot. Yeah. All right. So listen. Let's let's start with uh, Carlos. How many How many are you planning on running this year? Um, you know, uh, maybe about uh, maybe two two to three. Uh, right now we have one uh, for Bloodstone, uh, which is issue two. So and uh, and Bloodstone, just to tell you a little bit about it, uh, he's an assassin called Bishop Cross. Uh, he comes across uh, this uh, ancient deadly stone, and he becomes this uh, this blood guardian of the stone. So on each issue, he's facing a different villain that basically wants to get the stone away from Bloodstone. But it has a whole thing with demons and angels, so it's a whole big, uh, you know, a whole big uh, thing. It takes place in God's land. But it's uh, inspiration from, um, you know, I really like uh, Spawn and uh, and Batman, you know. So it's almost like a, a hybrid of those characters, but uh, but different. All right, cool. Listen, like I said, second half of the show, we're gonna go over your whole campaign. Trust me, we're gonna grill you. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Randy, what are you what are you looking at as far as uh, your campaigns? I'm trying to get everything out in the mail before I launch a new one. So after this one wraps. Probably three more in the year if I can handle it. Um, that's the goal. Gotcha. Now, all Kickstarter? Are you looking to yeah, do any other um, all Kickstarter? Right. I'm comfortable with the platform. I've got uh, somewhat of a fan base there. So that's what I'll be sticking with for sure. Gotcha. All right. Sounds good, man. Rob, what are you looking at this year? Yeah. So um, I'm aiming for four. Um, I got the first one going for uh, the plush here. And then um, I have the uh, Nightwolf 7 coming up in spring. And then Snowpaw 3, Summer. And then I'm also planning on doing a kid's board book featuring the the plush. So mm. hoping to, to do that in fall. <laughs> Halloween book. All right. Cool. Sounds nice. Sounds nice. Mr. Lanning. None. Yeah. What? <laughs> Come on. I'm any Kickstarter campaigns. I might Damn be artist. on Kickstarter campaigns, but I'm not running it. I don't have any plans to run any. But how, many, uh, how many is the boss running? Uh, oh, she ain't running none. She's the one. That, she's the one you go to to get your Kickstarter campaigns out there. What you talking about? <laughs> <Running them. laughs> don't worry she's about it. We'll how, how, how many is she about. supporting? How many? I don't know, that's a whole different business in the. How many is she using her magic <laughs> powers on, bro? Come on. Oh man, I have no idea. I've got I've got one that I'm on uh, for uh, Hazard Productions coming up in late late February, early March for. Uh, Dog House, which is kind of a Miami Vice with dogs type of thing. Uh, and then there's a couple other things that I'll show up in, but that's how I do it, man. I just show up, you know. He's like, I'm getting paid. Everybody else can do the stressful yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky. Lucky. Uh, damn artist. Um, <laughs> Joe, what are you looking at as far as uh, crowdfunding this year? What are you looking at? If anything, maybe one. Okay. okay, and that's only because I'm trying to do shows. I'm trying to go back on the show tip again. Mm. All right, how many shows are you looking to do this year? Uh, right now, I have just the one major one, which is C2E2 so far, right. but I haven't really checked as far as later on in the year. Mm. When so is C2E2? I, I know that C2. come come um, March, April, that's the first one that I'm doing that has. Could be, been completely paid for as of right now. Gotcha, Joe. Let me ask you about C2E2. I'm sorry, sidebar. Um, because I know myself and, and uh, at least three other people that applied early on to C2E2 never even got a response from our applications. You do anything special, or well, here's the here here's the oh. thing here. W what area did you apply to? Did you apply I for went... like a premier booth? No, vendor I, booth? I know. I went through small press. Like I always do. They're going to be very, very slow, and I would not be surprised if they get in contact with you at the last minute if anybody drops. Oh, yeah, no, I can't. Then I can't. Mm. I put that in way back when, you know what I mean? I try to schedule my shit early. Um, right, so but it, that's what happened to me last year, and they made a change in the contracts, and they never told us about it until the very last minute mm -hmm. when they told us about it. They said it's like the previous contract was null and voided, so I was up under no obligation to do it up under the new contract. So I was like, Gosh. oh, I, I walked away for that year. But I came back this year and filled out everything and was a okay. Yeah, no, I can't do – I can't – that's not a, a spur-of-the-moment con for me. That's a that's a 12-hour drive 
you know um mm -hmm. so i need at least one full day of work prior and and post you know just to get back home you mm -hmm. actually you need more you know more leeway just to make certain because if you if you do get it you need to make certain of all the other things getting all the other things in order at your house first before going there Unlike me, who actually lived in the city, so I actually lived in the city where. Oh, where they, Joe, you're beautiful. I fly by the seat of my fucking pants. I take whatever I got <laughs> to the shop with me, brother. That's why you buy in bulk. You buy in bulk, so you got this shit ready. You got a couple boxes uh, already of mixed merch that you can load up in one, two, three. Um, but the only thing I'm, only thing I'm saying is like, you know what? Supervisor and managers do not like last minute. So that's why I say it's like, you know, if you got even an inkling, I'd rather be like, you know what? I might take this time off. I'll let you know. Yeah, and then yeah. when it does happen to be last minute, it's like, you remember what I told you way back over when? Yeah, yeah I'm really going to need that now. That's why you don't ask for permission. You just yeah. do what you, What's more important? Paying the fucking bills at home or taking care of your comic book dreams? Which one? Which one? It's a, <laughs> it's a fucking disparity. Okay. Yeah. Shit, Look, hey, if you got vacation true. time, those that's your time. That's why you have Damn it. Right. Don't work around their schedule. That's your yeah. time. <laughs> Damn right, Rob. And if you got sick time, that's your time. And guess what? If you got no time, you'll make the money at the fucking convention. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> one, thing I, one thing I gotta say, don't work for government. That's true. Well, actually, yeah. technically, you do. You, you and I, I do. do. What the fuck? Yeah, you and I do. <laughs> but I know how my man <laughs> would react to I'm that. I've been working for over 18 years. God damn it. Shit. Yeah, I got, I got close to 21. Yeah, no, nice. Uh, so I like. Do you guys, I do you guys hit up any of the, like that. Of the like, big conventions? Yeah, I, I, it's my time, but you get back, it's like it's going to be hell to pay. <laughs> yeah, so, in which conventions? Oh no, uh, do you guys hit up like the big, uh, like San Diego Comic Con or New yeah. York? Have you guys hit those up? No. Yes. Yo, you, you guys have. Is, New York Comic Con is, was a regular for me. I haven't done it since the pandemic. Um, wow. New York, what's up? Oh no, like, yeah. No, I could imagine. Yeah, with the pandemic, it, it threw yeah. everything off. Um, I like what's going on right now with the Javits for the New York Comic Con because they uh last the year prior they opened up the big building. If anybody is familiar with the Javits, they opened up the big building that was under construction for over seven years, eight years. So it's a ton, a ton of more walking space. Um, a lot of the the higher profile um panels go on over there where the original, not the original, where the uh, most recent Artist Alley section was, they turned that into their equivalent of the San Diego Hall H, right? So that's become their big room seating almost 5,000 people. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and all they did was move the, the Artist Alley over to the, to the room that was adjacent to that. Um, and they still have space on top of that. Uh, it was over 200,000 people. Wow. You know, I, I know there's, I, I know there's people that, it's hard for them to make money. I'm not trying to knock that at all. I understand that. But, yeah. um, you know, New York Comic Con, dude, I, I, that's my show. You know what I mean? That's that's my, yeah. that's my backyard show. And we bring we bring everything. We bring the kitchen sink there. Because we don't got to pay for lodging, because we don't have to pay for travel expenses, um, mm -hmm. I buy extra tickets so I can have a team, a sales team, there with us um, pushing stuff. And, and we do good in New York Comic Con, man. We do real good. Wow. It's so, good to hear. So, so, so New Jay, York how, it's like C two E two to me. I'm sorry, Joe. Like New York to you, it's like C two E two to yeah. me. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Jay, how many, how many, uh, how many campaigns are you running this year? Um, so we're shooting for six. We're we. It's going to be a tight six. So if we don't hit six, we're definitely hitting five. With the sixth bleeding over to the following year, and two more trades coming out of what's being released this year. Um, so I've got. I got three books already set up with uh, one title called Limbo, Open Almost All Eternity, where um, Lucifer has vacated his throne and uh, there's a priest who now sits upon it um, mm -hmm. and everybody else is trying to make a bid for it. So that's a three-issue mini written by Gabriel. I'm, excuse me, I'm publishing for these guys. Uh, written by Gabriel Gamora, uh, illustrated um, and colored by Champa Ramirez and, and you know a bunch of other people mixed in there um, hooking that up. So that's three issues. I am collecting uh, Storm Chasers in the, the last four issues that came out um, previous to volume two. So that's going to be a trade coming out this year. I am restarting uh, this bad boy behind me, Shield of the Interceptor, our flagship title. And then uh, we're continuing with Vicky Sticks. If we can get that off, 
before the end of the year. And like I said, two of those things are going to be trades um, next year. And I'm, I've got a third trade coming out. I'm going to do something really fucking weird. Um, since we're going straight to a trade, I'm going to bridge all of my campaigns coming out with the third trade coming out in 2024. And it's going to be a stretch goal parceled out between all of the releases. So there's some build up to it. So it's not that we're putting out a whole book blindly. Um, I don't want to say we're using the Webtoons formula, you know, put something free and then collect it into a trade, but it's kind of the idea for it. So if people are, are back in all of our campaigns, right, they get a nice little treat, um, you know, original story, short story, not short story, excuse me. It's a hundred, it's going to be a 110 page trade and it will be digital as a stretch goal in black and white. And if that's received well, like I said, that'll be our third trade coming out in 24. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, to answer my own question, I'm looking at six to eight campaigns this year. So we'll yeah, see how yeah, that goes. Cur currently running one for myself. Daphne's running another one that I'm involved in. And, you know, should be a crazy year. Nice. So, that's two. <laughs> that's, <laughs> well, I consider it one. One for me, and then she has one. Oh, so that's what so it you, was. you mean eight, you mean you alone, huh? Oh yeah. Oh wow. I mean, between the two of us, we'll probably run fourteen to sixteen campaigns. God damn, days. son! I mean, it makes me exhausted just hearing it. You know I'm telling you, <laughs> my stomach is just like this. Yo, who <laughs> needs who needs sleep? Sleep is overrated. Not okay, you. Yes. <laughs> are this? Are they all going to be on the same platform or no? Kickstarter, uh, maybe. I'm thinking of trying. Um, see, the thing is, is if. That's all for Kickstarter. I may do one or two other things for Crowdfunder and maybe Indiegogo. I haven't Great. decided yet. You know, maybe Indiegogo. I might. I might give it another shot. But it's always Indiegogo is always a gut punch. So, yeah, you know. I'm. Uh, I, I really want to take a shot at Crowdfunder because mm -hmm. I want to put that embed code into the website and right. um, see what the results are. If I'm dropping a ton of advertising bucks going back to my website as mm -hmm. opposed to throwing the advertising dollars into Kickstarter.mybook, Indiegogo.mybook, right. you know, Zoop.mybook. Let's see what kind of traction I could get off of that. Um, yeah. For me, that's their biggest draw is their embed code right into the website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I'm probably going to try the same thing with Crowdfunder. You know, we'll see. We'll see. All right, Mr. J, you're up. Yeah. All right. We're all creators over here. Um, how do you how do you shut off that, that creative part of your brain so you can either enjoy everyday life or function in everyday life? So to give an example, you know, I, I can't be at a family function or family event where I'm like, oh, man, look at what that genius is doing. I, I could put that in a book or meeting somebody new and say, that's an interesting name or just driving with the wife and spacing off and hearing her ask, uh, are the gears turning your head? Because I can smell it right now. You know, I, <laughs> I, I have problems shutting off that creative part of my brain so I can function. Can anyone do it? Can any of you do it? And if you do, how do you do it? <laughs> All right, Randy, you're up, sir. I don't think I have that nonstop problem. There's obviously like bigger things that I kind of want to jump to the next idea that I have. It's not like every minute of the day. Um, yeah, I guess it's just a lack of time that I can't pursue everything that I would like to. Okay. So I really have to just focus down on what's at hand and kind of step by step do that. So I guess I'm just managing it okay. I don't know. Okay. All right. That's good. That means you're normal. You're not crazy like the rest of us. Me? <laughs> exactly. Rob, how do you handle it? Um, I think my ADD kind of helps with that just because like I'm like a squirrel. I'm all over the place when I like something to, I'm like, ooh, 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 you know, like um <laughs> but like I, I've been able to harness it in as like my superpower. I am the super multitasker. So I can do so many things like, you know, and, and here you, you can't really see it, but like you can see one screen, but I have three screens going all the way around to here. So I'm like checking, yeah. I'm doing everything at once when I'm sitting at my computer. And uh, <laughs> but when I'm out and, you know, like I'm, I think, you know, the same thing I do that where I'm like, you know, I'll stare off into space if I'm driving or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm sure there's times where my wife's like, Hey, you're not paying attention, but uh, yeah, I, a lot of it too is being able to shut it down is putting down the phone. Um, oh, yeah. because like, you know, constantly we're connected to everything that's going on. So like, if, if like you message me and I don't, if I don't message back, it's not that I'm ignoring you. It's that I'm purposely 
putting it down because I'm either with my kids or I'm with, uh, you know, watching my kids play sports or doing something with, with the wife. You know, you, you got to put the phone down. <laughs> like Legit. <laughs> No, true, true. Carlos, what do you think? Um, you know, it, uh, I, I could never uh, really shut it off. You know, uh, I'm always thinking about new ideas. Uh, it, sometimes even in my sleep, you know, something will pop in my head. You know, uh, you know it's kind of weird. Like you, you start. It's almost like you see the, the, the story in your head and and the the whole comic. You know, uh, what, what you want to see on each page. So it's I, I don't know if I'm crazy or not, but. No, that, I, that, yeah, that, I have a dream journal by my bed. If I wake yeah. up, dream, yes. I write that. Oh, you guys do, yeah. yeah. I'm guilty. No, you know, that's I'm a good guilty. idea. I have. I also have something like that. You know, like you jot, you jot down sporadic ideas, or you know, maybe something what somebody says in a panel, and I'll jot it down in a book so I, I don't forget it. You know, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's so hard to to really shut it off because you know, uh, maybe you watch a movie or something, and then an idea pops in your mind. So you know, just throughout the day, always. Always something is is, you know. I'm always trying to come up with new ideas. <laughs> All right, cool, uh, Mr. Lanning. Uh, I think the good thing about it is everybody else in my household is doing their own creative problem solving too. So I don't really, you know. But um, no, I don't think you have to. I like. I think Rob gave like the answer that I would give him is like multitasking, right? It's kind of the, it's kind of a double sided brain. You can. That is kind of my relaxation. That is my kind of, you know, come down is to is to think on that. Uh, when I'm at work and I do have to think about work stuff, that's what sucks. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. but as soon as that, I'm done with what I what I can just kind of slip into my own thing, that's when I go back into creative mode or what have you. So, okay. or while I'm doing work stuff, but we don't want to admit that live on YouTube, <laughs> right? Uh, to, right? <laughs> no, no, admit it live. Admit it no, live. Not, not, not working with heavy machinery, you don't. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Hi OSHA. How are you doing? Yeah, so, dude, okay. I drive I drive a couple ton truck in Manhattan. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But that but with Manhattan, you're only going what two two feet a minute or two feet a uh, half an hour anyway. So Yeah, as long as you don't work in a wood shop and you don't chop your fingers off or something. Yeah, you know, that's, you know, that's, yeah. That's, and Oh, Not a wood shop, but it's close to it. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm only, you know, just gunshots through there. But if I chop my fingers off, that would make a great, uh, great comic. I could say. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I actually had a fr- an artist friend who, um, who was working in a steel mill around here, and um, he lost a lot of his on his drawing hand too. So he had to retrain oh, himself wow. with the other hand. Oh, oh wow! Yeah, that yeah. sucks. I'm oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, seriously. Well, I don't know if you guys know Frank Frazetta. You know, he had a when he had a stroke. He, I think, yeah. he taught himself to draw with his opposite hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you got you got to do what you got to do to get that creative itch out. Yeah, yeah. Well, unless you don't. <laughs> I, think a finger, I think a finger is like ten thousand actually. <laughs> yeah. Sheesh. So this is a lot like the yakuza. You got to chop it off, or you don't say the truth. Uh, I think I think it might be ten thousand for a limb. I'm not. I don't think it's that. God damn it. It's Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Boss is yelling. Yeah. Boy, somebody's yeah. keeping up with it, huh? Yeah. So now yeah. you're all witnesses. Yeah. Well, that's because yeah. she's going to cut yours off. And that way, that she has that twenty grand in the bank. Exactly. <laughs> she's 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 you out landing, and she's like, <laughs> "I could turn him into a stump for a hundred grand." Here I come. Got to be uh, back. In, there's your angel backer right there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, man. Damn. Uh, Joe, what are you thinking? You don't turn it off because life is, is usually more creative than you are half of the time. Especially if you're in a job that I, I'm in where you have to solve other people's problems. And a lot of times you have to use detective work to figure out what they did in the first place to figure out why, they, why it is a problem. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times I just don't turn it off. It's kind of more blissful where you could actually think about what you could do outside of the norm and not be bothered by the trivial, if I could say that. All right. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I, I would like to say I turn it off, but it's hard, man. It's hard. You know, the only time I could turn it off is maybe when I'm watching a movie yeah. and I'm focused just on that TV show. 
you know, that's the only time. But I have to be focused. Or I'm reading. If I'm reading, that's when I can really turn it off because I have to pay attention, you know, and not get myself involved in the story. Because then, you know, if I read a paragraph and I stare off into space thinking about what could have happened, I'm not really reading the story. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you, you have to focus. Read. Exactly. And it does it, you know, that, that makes the that experience pointless. And I like to enjoy what I, you know, the stuff that yeah. I consume. So yeah, you put it in reserve. You're still creating. It's just in reserve. So when you're done reading, it all comes forward. That's, oh, that's, no, no, yeah, but that's is what it is. Yeah. yeah. But that well, that comes storage. later though. Right. <laughs> I mean, look, last night I, I'm trying to watch a movie with my wife, right? And mm -hmm. I'm spending a good 30, 35 minutes just da -da 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 -da. it's coming out right it's firing it out and I, i'm texting and i'm in there and i'm setting it up and i keep rewinding the movie you know because i want to see it now now mm -hmm. i'm ruining her experience right mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. as creative people we gotta we gotta work on something when when it hits us right because that when when that when that that gear is grinding shit we could get a lot of stuff out but what's the price right you know and, and if the price is I'm gonna get the Mrs. Pissed, you know, <laughs> and, and whatever. It may seem trivial, right? Uh, uh, to some people. Yeah, so, yeah. No, yeah, my wife would skin me alive if I did that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, and 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 doing this plus the day job, right? The the amount of time that I get to spend with her, quality time is limited. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure that when I'm with her, I'm in the moment. So sometimes I do need. To shut that stuff down, just to give her her due, her respect, her 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 peace of mind with me, or you know, or, 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 as we build our lives together. I mean, but Jay, I know you. I mean, Jesus, more than ten minutes. I mean, would be killer for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's all she needs ten minutes oh, of your time, and that should be enough. Bro, you know what? <laughs> She's suffering on a regular basis, bro. I gotta give her. I gotta give her some stuff. <laughs> But here's, my, here's my question for you here, uh, Jay, because of what you just said here. Uh huh. You're with her. Uh huh. There's going to be times where it's like honey, take the honey deuce type stuff. It's actually spending time because okay. sometimes you have to have follow up no, no. questions and everything. The quality time that you're talking about is the more intimate type type yeah. of time, and with that intimate type stuff, you just have to be like, hey. This is a time set aside to do this, just like how you have a time set aside to, to work on that next script. Yeah, but that's uh, not really that's turning it three, off. It's that's more, two, it's maybe three minutes schedule. of his day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just part, that's, what, that's what I'm getting at. It's just a natural part of your day. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it, it's just like, why, why are you saying that you have to like really, really turn it off, turn it off when it's like it should be a natural part of your day? And I would not consider. What the creative being a natural part of the day, or the no, quality? no, 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 the the spending time with the wife and getting that yeah. quality time in should be a natural part of your day. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, look, all right, now now we're gonna step to the side for a second with the comic book stuff, right? Um, uh, you know, marriage is not just goody gumdrops and roses. You got You got to work on it, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's not. It's not cool. always. Hey. You know, mm -hmm. settle in like like you're expecting a check to come in every two weeks. You got right. you got to work on it. You got to make sure that the relationship is is functional. You got to make sure that this, for lack of a better phrase, you got to make sure the spouse is happy. I know it sounds like a cliche, better mm -hmm. wife, better better life. Happy right? life, happy life. But, That's how, yeah, but, yeah uh, From a personal standpoint, and, and I know uh, Calderon's, you know, he's being facetious with it, but she puts up with a lot of shit, right? She go she goes to a bunch of conventions. She travels. Right, she allows me to be uh, 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 doing things that normal couples don't do when they're involved in this. So, not only is it out of love, but it's also out of her giving due respect that I give her her quality time, whether it's intimate, whether it's vegging out on the couch, whether it's you know uh, uh, her sitting down talking to me about the day as I'm making something for her to dinner. But I gotta make sure the same amount of passion I put into the work I'm trying to produce with comics is the same, if not more, I try to put into my marriage. So mm -hmm. out of that respect for, let's be honest, for her allowing me to live in this space, right? Because doing comics is not fucking easy. Doing comic books is not fucking cheap, right? 
and when I mean cheap, I don't just mean financial. I mean time wise, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, so for her to allow me to function in this space and and function as well as I do, I gotta give her her due because if not, then what I'm working for isn't as sweet. So I need to shut it down to give her that quality time. Did you just say you function well in this space? But anyway, Joe, your your, your question. (laughs) (laughs) Joe, you're up. What's your question? Uh, Shoot, I had several. And now, (laughs) except, except for the one. And the one that I have is kind of an offshoot of what was talked about in an earlier show. Okay. And it's going to come back to why do people who crowdfund focus too much more, too much on the funding goal and not focus on the backer total? Because to me, the backer total is the key to growing your IP as opposed to the overall funding. But yet there's so much emphasis about getting that five and six figure grand total as opposed to getting a thousand two thousand ten thousand backers okay that's fair rob you're the man (laughs) (laughs) um so for me i do think that backer count is more important um you know the more people reading the more you you know they'll come back and, and have the books however there is kind of like a thin line too between the two you kind of, they kind of work hand in hand. You got to have the one to be able to serve the other. Like if you got a thousand backers, but you haven't had enough to pay for the book, you're going to have a thousand people pissed off at you, you know? Um, so I think that's part of it. And I think that's also why like, you know, the algorithm with Kickstarter particularly is that they both, they pay attention to both. You know, if you're having multiple backers come in, come in, come in, come in, flying off the handle the first day, like you're like already 200 backers on day one, you chances are they're, they're going to promote you because they're also going to see that your funds are also going up and up and up. So Kickstarter is going to give you that extra love. Whereas like, you know, if you have less people, but a lot of money, they're still not going to give you the, as much love because they, they see the people to be, you know, the higher backing count um, as being important as well. All right. There you go. Interesting. Nice. Carlos, what are you thinking? Oh, uh, yeah. No, I, I have to agree with that. I, I think it's, uh, yeah, it should be a balance between your backers and your actual goal, you know. Um, but definitely, uh, you know, getting the backers uh, interested in your project is, uh, you know, one of my my primary goals, you know. And uh, and sometimes it's hard as an indie guy to, you know, to promote your, your Kickstarter. You know, sometimes I get a lot of emails, like junk emails of people, uh like they're they're gonna promote your crowdfunding mm-hmm. for a certain amount and, and I, I know dollars. i know for sure that's a scam oh yeah you know but they're all exactly 99.9 percent of the time <laughs> yeah 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 i figured that out yeah from the first campaign i'm like it's, it's no way if you if you if you pay that you're never gonna see uh the oh, whatever man. you paid to those those scammers you know yeah that but uh, yeah but i i agree i agree that yeah it, it should be a good uh uh, you know, equal between the backers and, and your actual role. I'm sorry, Carlos, uh, just to capitalize on what you're saying. I love to respond to them with, oh, what? why don't you advertise in the book that I have being released so that way you can reach more people with your message. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they bite on it. It's going to fucking you'll, work. You'll, you'll, never, you'll never hear a response. Yeah. You'll never hear a response. Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Hopefully they take you off your li- off their list at that point. It's oh, no. Good. It, it, it keeps getting worse. It gets worse and worse. I, I, I've gotten so many, you know, those, those junk offers, you know, it's, it's terrible. Oh, yeah. But no, yeah. Like, anyway, for anybody that's, yeah. for anybody that's watching. Yeah. Just be careful of that stuff. Yeah. They, mm-hmm. They'll hit your email box. They'll hit your Kickstarter message. They'll kick your, they'll get your Instagrams, your Facebooks. Oh, they'll, they will crawl yeah. and find you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I'm constantly deleting those. Uh, Randy, what are you thinking? It's actually interesting that Joe brought this question up because I was talking to my kids at lunch today about this exact thing, um, whether they want big totals versus a lot of backers. And they do go hand in hand. I think you can pretty much calculate with the average pledge. It's usually exactly the same throughout all my campaigns, like right around that $25 mark. Whether you've got a bunch of PDFs sold or a couple high ticket items, 
the average is always the same for me. So it's going to go up hand in hand. I think I would prefer to have more backers, uh, even if it's not hitting those higher levels, just because hopefully they'll get the word out and we can spread it a little bit quicker like that, um, multiplying each of their circles of friends and family that they might share it with rather than one guy that's like really, uh, I don't know, splurging on a $500 reward tier or something like that. I'd rather have hundreds of people that are all behind this and pushing it further. Mm. Okay, cool. Mr. Lanning, what are you thinking? Being creative, I'm sorry, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah, no, I can understand. I, 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 it's really, it's kind of, a, it's, I think most people have really said it when I could, the only thing I could really add to that, um, yeah, backers and, and money, but for instance, I saw somebody that had a hundred and something backers, but their, their money was $2,000. That's mm. not a, that's, there's not a, there seems to be, there needs to be a balance maybe. Uh, yeah. Backers are word of mouth and that's, that's great and everything, but Webtoons gets word of mouth too. Mm -hmm. And those are free. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that works. But when you, when you are funding, you're, you're funding not only for the people that are backing you, but you're also funding for like your conventions, you're funding for your store, you're funding for, for those, those issues. So the more funding that you get means, yeah, you have so many backers here, but that also means more potential to reach other people. Right. Am I, am I wrong in that? No, you're right. Yeah. 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 So you're looking at, okay, you have 70 backers, but now you have enough money to print 200 books. So those 70 books go out. And now you have 130 books you could put on the table or where are in your store, whatever the case is. And reach other backers. So uh, the question is: Are we only looking at backers for uh, Kickstarter, or are we looking at supporters and the whole gamut? Hmm. Is, is my question. The, the uh, question because is Kickstarter is in its well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. as a whole. To, to, to yes, but of, but it's and it's essential. So it's kick. Wait, but in it's essential. It's essentially a funding tool, right? It's mm -hmm. not really a, a an advertisement tool. Can it work that way? Absolutely. Uh, I think Tom Hutchinson did a fantastic job on his interview with J.D. Calderon the other day when he was talking about using stores and brick and mortar and diamond, not as a way to make money, but as a way to oh, market, yeah. really, to let itself mm -hmm. right. see, right? So that's Probably kind of, funny. yeah, Kickstarter can do that, and you can have those backers, and that's great. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the funding is what's going to end up pushing you into those stores, into having those things, and even expanding more to people who aren't on Kickstarter. But that so, also leads to a one and a one and done scenario too, where people, where, where where now people are you know trying to do this to see if they can recapitalize it for the next issue, the next issue, the next issue, which turns it into a different vehicle revenue wise. It's how? not essentially a pure funding as far as pure investment in the way that you're thinking of it absolutely no, no 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 hold on okay but here's the thing is now you're taking your book out and you are investing into a wider a wider audience than mm -hmm. what you are on kickstarter so no what you're talking about is actually the very opposite of what i'm saying uh yeah I yes sir. Know. no 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 in all honesty because you're sitting there only on Kickstarter worrying about backers, and you're only worried about the 50 people that are on there. But now mm -hmm. I have enough funding that I have enough. Where are you going to reach your cold audience? People. How are you reaching a cold audience by putting something? Well, aren't on you going to cons, Joe? Aren't you going to cons? Are you not going to cons? Do you have to have rely have a on your immediate sure? audience that you have? But see, you're all, right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Gentlemen, relax, relax. Take no, it easy. It's, it's, it's calm. Don't, don't get that no, excited. Let's just go. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you're going backwards here because you're sitting here talking about Kickstarter, not using Kickstarter as a primary funding, and then you're just worried about backers here. But you need to expand outward. How are you going to do that? If you that, don't get the funding, if you the only get the funding. part of that particular problem that I'm bringing up. Hey, you're up here putting you to me, one, like you're putting cart one. before the horse, and you're saying I'm doing the exact same thing when it comes to funding. Because to me, when it comes to funding, mm -hmm. I want to see where you put skin in the game before I invest in you. Huh? A lot of people are coming out there saying I need X amount of dollars to produce a book, right? Which includes all the artists, all all the printing. Exp and like you said, expanding out to other audiences and everything. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of people are not putting even the slightest bit of skin in the game as far as that aspect of funding. But when you are doing that prior to it, well, I, hold and you, on, and, and you are looking hold at there, okay, bro, I need to gain. You're, you're, you're backtracking on 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 a lot. Yeah, of yeah, stuff. yeah. Because because I mean, you know, listen, hold on. I don't know of anyone, no one, who hasn't put has to put you. No matter what level you're at, you have to put some skin in the game. Yes. You know what I mean? You have to, whether it be time or money, right? We all got to do that. I don't care what level you're at. You could come in with no cash, but you still got to put in time. And if you don't put in no cash, that means you got to like put triple the amount of time you got to put in. So that's skin in the game, right? Or have a credit card ready. Right. <laughs> or have a credit card ready. Yeah, and that, right. right. And that, that's well, even worse because that's, that's 26% point, on top that's of- a, uh, that's, a, that's a good point that, uh, you know, I think that the, the main- uh, sacrifice that you have is time you know because right say you spend say you spend uh just saying uh, a year and a half to make a book then it doesn't go anywhere you know you you just lost that amount of time you know right. so it's uh it, it is like rolling but, the dice you know but his question yeah. was right let's let's bring it all back for <laughs> let's a bring it back because yeah. we went we went on a on a huge yeah. well, well you, you were you were up <laughs> I was just asking answers. a question <laughs> no 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 but see don't like you you're trying to listen you did you did ask you for what I wanted to do landing, with this question <laughs> it wasn't landing it was going to be me so <laughs> let, let, let me let me bring this out okay Joe asked Joe asked why are people focusing on either more Funding goal or backer count, okay? You know what? As long as the backer count is greater than the campaign that came previous, I'm golden, okay? I'm go. golden, yes. all right? What I'm doing is I'm printing up. I'm doing offset printing, and I'm chiming this every time I speak to fucking people. I'm doing offset fucking printing are because you? a book is coming out. Yeah, we are. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> We're doing offset. All right, let's put this down, like, all right? If you want to put skin in the game, right? If you want to put your money where your mouth is, you're going to print up that book, all right, at a big fucking count because now the onus is on you to fucking sell it and to make your money, right? So you're not just going to sell the book on this campaign. You are going to sell it at on-site events, be it conventions, be it store signings, be mm -hmm. it uh, store shelves, okay? Um, fuck it. Bobby's Flea Market on fucking Saturday church. Uh, uh, <laughs> you're going to be selling, selling it then. All right? Dude, but JoJo at the barbershop. Barbershop. <laughs> Weed shop, barbershop, fucking bodega. It doesn't fucking matter. You want to put my book on your shelf? God bless. Thank you. I'm going to kiss your ass until that shit fucking sells because I want you to buy the next fucking batch. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's what it comes down to. And then, you know what? I'm also going to be selling that same fucking book on my next campaign. Right. And you need to have that stuff in stock. So you need the money though to pay for that shit. Yep. So yeah, focus on the fucking goal. Focus on the goal, but budget wisely. Make sure you put in enough money, um, not just for the tchotchkes, but enough money that you're putting in to promote the fucking book, whether it's you're taking out ads, whether you're buying fucking on airtime on somebody else's podcast. Whether you're paying on fucking somebody's Patreon to get a mention someplace else, all right? And then you look at your next campaign, all right? And you say, okay, you know what? I'm going to take 15% of the money I took, I made from this campaign and set it aside to fucking make the next uh, uh, campaign promotions, all right? And hopefully that number goes up because if that number goes up, that 15% will grow so you can spend more on your next campaign. Yeah. All right, so it's not that it's yin and yang, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's not. It's, as long as the, the needle is moving on the back account, that's a fucking plus. As yeah. long as the, the, the money is there to pay for my shit, all right. If, if there's money there to pay for the next shit, now we're fucking going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I mean, I need to, right. to answer that question. <laughs> so for myself, like I've had campaigns where I've had, I think it was like 96 backers. Right. And I made more money on that campaign than I had when I did 130 backers. Right? right. Why? Because I had like three backers in a 96 campaign that bought like a $400 level. Right. I had three of them. So, you know, what are you going to do? And then you might have like 50 backers who just get PDFs. Right. So, you know, it balances itself out. You know, I mean, I, I you know, I wish I had a thousand PDF backers because that, that would be awesome. 
Um, but Randy, Randy no, brought this no up. Shipping. Randy, no, no shipping. No yeah, shipping. Yeah, no shipping. Yeah. Yeah. But no Randy packing. brought it up, right? Because one of the other factors you need to keep your eyes on <laughs> is that average backer pledge, right? Yeah. And if you're going under 25, you're mm -hmm. starting to, you know, you're starting to, to, to go into the orange zone, right? Yeah, you the know, DPT, you know, right? Four, but you mm -hmm. want to look at what's going wrong, all yeah. right? And if you can make – you can make second half adjustments, then you make those adjustments to get that backer pledge up beyond 25. And that's yep. something that a lot of people don't talk about. That $25 mm -hmm. backer pledge is huge. That's something that has to be paid attention to as well. Yep, exactly. So, Joe, what, what's your own answer to your own question? My answer is I, I pay more attention to backer total because you always want to look at growth. You can't just be like, here, hit this, hit this financial total successful it's like well look at your previous campaigns look at how many people are buying elsewhere because mm -hmm. again kickstarter is time and effort too if i'm putting out a campaign to fund the next issue and i'm only getting if you know you know 20 30 40 50 people but when i go to a convention i'm selling you know 100 200 is it really worth the effort just for that for that 50 and then yeah. you know, have to look at how do i get that you know the 200 or 300 so at shows or other venues to come over to kickstarter to get it there and vice mm -hmm. versa i haven't even talked about what if you have your own company website where they could buy directly from you and and places like comiXology and all this other stuff but for you to really see if your true if your ip is truly going you have to look at that back account and no, maybe be no, like, hey, no, you don't. No, because you, you, are you factoring in your newsletter count? Because that's bigger than the fucking backer count, right? Because mm -hmm. if I got a, if I got again, a, a, a you newsletter use that page. newsletter to get people over to uh, over to the crowdfunding site. No, that's, get, that's, the point, that's the point. That's the point I was I'm, talking about about moving that needle. But not just the crowdfunding site. That's going to go to where the fuck I'm going to be. What am I selling this week? Where the hell did I wipe my ass at? I don't care. You you want to have that interaction going, bro. You know, and and that newsletter is going to carry me from platform to platform to platform. Yeah, no, it doesn't right? always. But Jay, you that. also know that that Billy Bob is going to meet you at New York Comic Con to get that next issue, and there's no other way that he's going to get that issue until he sees you at New York Comic Con. Okay, and if he does, goddamn Billy Bob, thank you for coming through. Thanks for that. Exactly. Right, Bob, Billy Bob, you can't make it to the New thing, York The thing that I'm trying to get people You're to see here Disney about, book, about the back of color is like, in a sense, with Billy Bob, Billy Bob may bring his friend and, and Billy Bob's friend would buy. Cool. When it comes I mean, to crowdfunding, when it comes to crowdfunding and your crowdfunding backers come that are your standby reliables, it's no guarantee that those that are cold to you are coming too. And you have mm -hmm. to move that needle, right? That's to. that's that's the case every time. But hold on, Rob. Rob, you were gonna say something. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just saying. Yeah, I was uh, basically about the creative email, problem. The, the email is that it doesn't always translate to backer count because you're you're collecting those people from different cons, from store signings, whatever. Like you have a menagerie of email subscribers and. Mm -hmm not even a quarter of that unless like you entire unless the only people you've added to your list has come from your Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. And really, I mean, you think, figure if, even if you have a good 20% people opening those emails, that's a great here, number. 2% yeah. of those people are backing. If that right. <laughs> right, exactly. right, right, right. You're damn right. Right. Yeah. Uh, or, or some people don't want to use the platforms. Let's not forget about that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Excuse mm -hmm. me. Some people will just wait for you to put it up they'd rather wait the three months for you to put it up on your website than wait the two months from backing it to receiving it on a, on a platform right True. they'd rather use the paypal because boom it, it's easily translatable i don't know All about right. you guys on my site yeah. well, about Jay, Jay, hold, on, hold, on, hold on you're running overseas time man it's seized time. my time wait am i supposed to ask the question Sorry. oh no man. you're supposed to ask a question <laughs> see got his oh, time. Man. Oh, time go ahead see go I an ask the question. I, thought, I didn't realize there were four co-hosts over here okay yeah uh, there were four yeah you were supposed <laughs> to what what it is is i thought, Jay, I I thought jay wasn't going to be here this week but he, right. he you know but it's next oh. somebody doesn't somebody doesn't listen this is true i don't i don't sorry because he's got the creative problems happening. That's why. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so it is right now. I'm plotting out three stories. All right. So somebody, okay. So here, here's the deal. Somebody just mapped out what's selling on Kickstarter to say that. Uh, and one of those percentages was was doing well is uh, webtoons selling in physical uh, as physical copies. So my question is this: uh, Is it beneficial to give your stuff away for free and then come back and sell it later on? Is that is that a is that a good tool to use? Is that something we should invest in, or is that kind of a fluke thing? Interesting, uh, Carlos, you're up. Oh yeah. Um, well, uh, I, I would I would say uh, it is to actually. I I've given some of my stuff for for free. You know, throwing it on uh, uh, different comic book uh, you know websites for free, and people get interested in the in the story because sometimes people don't want to. You know, they don't if they don't know what uh, what the story's about, or you know, they won't invest in more issues. So I think it is beneficial to some degree. You know, especially maybe the first the first issue, so you, know, you could get people interested in the, you know, in, in the character and the story. So I think I think it is a good idea, you know, to to some degree to you know to you know to advertise yourself and get get the fans interested in the in the story. All right. Cool. Okay. Randy, you, you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, so even my current campaigns for issues two and three of the series, and I've been giving away the story for number two, the full thing for free, and try to build some buzz and at least proof that if you like this one, then you may continue and buy it. But as far as uh, Webtoons, I had the original bullet up there, and one backer came from Webtoons. So I can't say that there's any correlation between people who will look at it for free and actually buck up and pay for it so i don't know other people probably have better luck than me but i didn't see it gotcha rob what are your thoughts so i'm all about giving away like my first issue of night wolf um for like signing up for my email list um i'm gonna start actually now that i've had issue two out for snowpaw i'm gonna start doing the same thing issue one will start going out and as an email sign up uh freebie as well basically just to kind of like help build up that prior to um, you know, and then when I'm launching, you know, more for like Snowpaw, I'm launching for issue three next. So, you know, if you're getting a catch up tier, you're still getting one, two and three, no matter what, you know, whether you gave it one away or not, you know, um, mm -hmm. similar with, um, you know, with Nightwolf, like given I've been giving that away for a long time. I've been building my list off of that, you know, for at least like four years now. So and people are still going and getting it. And, you know, whether they translate or not, I mean, you know, I do get some unsubscribes, but I do get a lot of people sticking around. So, you know, uh, and, and my back account tends to, to stay rather relatively high. Um, so, I mean, I can't say that it doesn't translate, but hey, it, um, I, you know, it doesn't hurt. Because it, it really, it's it's starting off, they're going to get that first issue. And I always end my books on a cliffhanger. So mm. they're, they're basically going, oh, you know, I want to find out what happens next. And, you know, I've had some website sales on my website right after somebody downloaded yeah. and jumped on the list. So, yeah, sometimes it is worth doing it. And, you know, I, I you know, wouldn't give the whole series away um, you know, because I don't put out that much to begin with. <laughs> no, I got you. Right. Yeah, and webtoons. I don't. I don't. For me, like, I don't have the time to like put it into its format or to right. really, you know, work the art that way. So you know, I'm sure it works for others. I know a couple people who have done that and it's done well for them. Um, but yeah, that's. I don't think that's my space. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joe, what are you thinking? I'm thinking it's more outside of my control on, over that. You could put it out there for free, but it comes back down to do the people who like your work appreciate it enough to actually pay for it mm -hmm. i mean you could do whatever you can to promote yourself i mean i do like what rob said as far as amazonia number one and prime time saturday night number one that's been you could go out there and get get that by subscribing to the email list and read it to you blue in the face however if they're direct translate translation to actual sales later on not necessarily it really comes back down to do that individual who read it or signed up appreciate the work and whatnot. Uh, the other thing that I could also say is like when I put up um, the work in progress or the stuff that I've been doing on my um, show as of late where I'm showing the behind the scenes work of primetime Saturday night number four, those who appreciate watching me do the work and me explaining what I'm doing will come back and buy. But it's kind of hard to sell how that truly translates. It's, it's just 
really comes back down to the other individual and how much they appreciate the work that you put into it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Definitely. Jay, what are you thinking? Um, yeah, there, there's a few ways to go about this. Like, like Rob and then Joe, I do give away the books to sign it up for the newsletter. Um, you know, we do that in, we do the physical copies at, at conventions. Um, but you know, if you only got one book in your catalog, I, I wouldn't give away any, I wouldn't give it away. You know, <laughs> if, if, you got, if you got something of a catalog, then yeah, yeah, you, you could, um, you know, if you can afford it. Right. Um, if you're in a place to afford it, because if you've made your money back. Yeah. OK. Uh, but then I am also testing out this new concept that I said, uh, you know, at the top of the show where uh, uh, our third trade that's going to be um, coming out in 2024. We're going to be giving it away as a stretch goal. Mm -hmm. So it's a, as an additional stretch goal at no extra charge in each one of our releases um, coming out this year, you know, and that'll. That'll bridge um, all of our campaigns. So if you've backed all of us, you know, you can get the full story um, as a reward for, for sticking with us through the stuff, right? But it's also, again, the lead-up time, the promotional time, the getting people aware of the product time. So that way, when it comes time to release it in a physical copy, you know, hopefully some of that will translate into, into sales. How much of that? I don't know. All right, cool. Uh, for yeah. myself, look, I got a website, uh, the OswaldChronicles.com. We have TallTalesOnline.com. All this, most of the stuff, not everything's on there, but like, you know, we have. I have literally ugh, a couple thousand pages on there, you know, for free. Yeah, yeah. People just go and check it out. But the thing is, though, is I tell everybody, I say, look, you want to continue seeing more of it? You're gonna want to probably go back to campaign because I have to pay these people, right? Yeah. I have to pay the artists. They like to eat, so. Yeah. You know, you have to come over and hopefully help out. And a lot of them do. You know, a lot of them come over. And, and sometimes you you won't see them for two or three campaigns. But I've had guys come back and be like, look, you know, my money's straight now. I need this, this, this. And they, they shoot me a list of stuff they need. And, you know, we end up fulfilling for them. But, yeah, I mean, I, I've seen it work. I've seen it work. It would, It's definitely worked for me. Um, So, I mean, yeah, definitely if you have a series and you got four or five issues, that first issue is a free giveaway. You know, I mean, I would definitely encourage doing that, you know, because I, like I said, I think it works, especially to get a, to get on the mailing list. Mm -hmm. That's something we do. And right. the other thing I, I also do on the website is I chop up all the pages. So it's not just a full comic page. So it's not for me. It's not the complete reading experience, like reading a comic book, you know. So I, I tell everyone, I say, look, you can enjoy it on the website, but it's not the same experience. The superior experience is to buy the actual comic book. You know, or even just a PDF, because the PDF comes in page format. So you can also have it like that. It's not broken up the way uh, the website is. So there are little tricks, there are little tricks to it. So that you you can move it around, you know. Um, Mr. Lanning, you can answer your own question. Oh, I have to answer that question? Jeez. Well, your question, you should answer. <laughs> well, first of all, let me let me kind of point back before I answer this because it's gonna be an ignorance. Because let me let me point to the fact that I did say earlier this I'm not planning on running any Kickstarters and any Kickstarters I've been on is because I've been hired or I've worked on them. So I, I, I kind of wonder on this grounds is uh, absolutely if you give it away for free, I don't necessarily see that it's going to work for you. Uh, I see Laura Olympus, which is a huge webtoon and Barnes and Noble, and it's a gorgeous book. But one thing that keeps me from buying it is I can go read it free online if I really wanted to. Um, mm -hmm. That, as opposed to seeing something that's beautiful on in, in a bookstore and buying it to read it. You know, I can go read it. If I like it, I'll go pick it up. But I kind of wonder on this grounds, if what if you use those free like webtoons or free comics or whatever to push other things, not just books, but maybe merchandise? Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I, I kind of wonder how that would work. Because sometimes if you get, you know, you put the merchandise out there. If you look at animation right now and indie animation, that's yeah, <laughs> shameless plug, right? Uh, but if you look at indie animation right now, they're not necessarily making money off of putting free stuff on YouTube. What they're making money off of is the amount of pins, t shirts, and things like that, that right. they have on their website itself. Well, and Tyler Carpenter even made that statement before one of the last times I was on here in the chat. He made the statement that you can't have that five dollar mindset, which is right. You can't have that five dollar mindset, you have to be able to 
expand and uh, and sell in other places. <laughs> I, 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 I love where, where C's going. Can I capitalize on what he's saying for a second? Well, well go ahead. Because the other, the other yeah, business, that's all I have. <laughs> the business models, the business models are out there, right? It's just that they are so much, uh, uh, you know, everyday happenings that we overlook it. Radio songs are played for free every fucking day, right? I'm team time today, yet people are still buying them on iTunes and Spotify, right? Um, going back to the to the idea of using the product to sell the merchandising. What the fuck were cartoons for in the 80s, goddammit, if it wasn't to sell the toys afterwards, okay? Mm -hmm. You don't think Hasbro put up G.I. Joe for free on YouTube well just for people can't – they don't buy their toys? So the things are out there. The problem is we are not educated enough as independent creators in the ways of business to see those things, to apply that to ourselves, even though they're happening in our everyday lives. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about because that makes an excellent segue. <laughs> <laughs> right? You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So great segue. So Rob, what do we have here? So yeah. Um, so I am jumping into the merchandising. Uh, <laughs> so this campaign is for this uh, lovely little plush uh, that we have here. Um, and it's also uh, a for people who haven't been a part of my wolf, wolf pack. Speaking of uh, building communities, my audience um, is my wolf pack, and I refer to them as such because I encourage them to be a part of the process as well. Um, so that's kind of how we came to uh, the voodoo doll plushie is that um, he was a part of a pinup in the trade paperback for Night Wolf uh, Volume One. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when I ask my after each like, Kickstarter, I'll run a survey and I'll ask, you know, what kind of things do you guys want me to put out or what, what are you looking to, you know, for? And uh, plus you for the voodoo doll was one of the things that was, uh, was asked for. So um, also uh, the, going along with this, as I was starting to say, was um, the so new Wolfpack members can jump in the series by getting either a standard retail edition of issues one through six. Or there's also this gorgeous connecting covers, uh, limited variant print run of issues one through six. Um, with all the characters that are uh, pretty much in the book at this point in time. <laughs> nice. Do you want me to play? Do you want me to play the video? Oh, uh, I mean, we probably could cover it without doing the video. <laughs> <laughs> you can work into the video. Play the video. Okay, play the play video. The, if you want the video, play the video. Play the video. I'll, let, okay. I'll let the video talk no, for me. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Play, give it him a single. Give him a single. A full screen on the video. Plush toys inspired by supernatural beings like werewolves. Then the Night Wolf Voodoo doll is the perfect plush toy for you. This cuddly velveteen werewolf pup is a great snuggle buddy for you or your little ones all through the night. Hi, I'm Robert A. Terry, and I'm the creator and writer of Nightwolf and the new series Snowpaw. It's been my dream since I was a kid struggling with attention deficit disorder and dyslexia to become a comic book creator because comics have helped me learn to overcome my learning disabilities. For the past five years, I've had the pleasure of self-publishing Nightwolf 1 through 6 as well as Snowpaw 1 and 2 with the help of my backers, who I refer to as my wolf pack. Now I stand ready to produce my first plush toy inspired by my character, Nightwolf. That's why I've come back to pay for the production and the rewards that you will receive for backing this project. Also available during this campaign are brand new connecting covers of the first six issues of Nightwolf in honor of the fifth anniversary of Nightwolf number one being published. What's Nightwolf about? Born into an outcast breed of werewolves known as the Monokai, 18-year-old Rodney Marcelli is reluctantly thrown into an ancient war between good and evil in today's world where the line has been blurred. With the help of Snowpaw, the pureblood Monokai, and the supernatural evil slayer Nighthunter, Rod must learn to master his newly found lycanthropy and mysterious kinetic energy power that only he possesses. Rod must fight the Dark Covenant in order to avenge his friends, family, and to save the girl he loves from the master vampire, Lord Malice. Rodney Marcelli is Nightwolf. I'd like to personally thank you in advance for backing this project and joining the Wolf Pack. I'm extremely grateful for where I am now as a self-publisher and continuing to serialize new comic books for you to enjoy. There's no risk in backing this project since the Nightwolf issues 1 through 6 are already published and this plushie is production ready. Again, thank you for taking this creative journey with me. I appreciate it so much. So what are you waiting for? Join the Wolf Pack today. Nice. 
Very cool. Very nice. <laughs> you know, it's, I cut off the very end of that because I've cracked myself up laughing so hard <laughs> because I did that. I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> no, no, it's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Oh, hey. it's a voodoo plushie. That's why he got the cross out eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. So the original, the original um, uh, was from a pinup by uh, Megan Alford um, for my trade. And she came up with the idea for it. And I was like, that's actually, you know, like, that's really cool. Like, I def we definitely got to keep that in there. And, you know, because, yeah, so here, um, you see it real close up. But that's, um, you know, the, the, the pin up there as well. Hold on, hold on. Let me bring you up. Where are you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was hiding. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, so she came up with the pinup and then uh, had the voodoo doll in there. And people were like, that's so adorable. I would love to have that as a plush. And I was like, well, oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. It's very, it looks very are you, good. Are you getting it? Uh, where are you going to produce that? Uh, through Skelton Crew Studios. Um, they have a, a factory that they work with overseas. Okay. Um, but I mean, like the quality on this thing is ridiculous. I mean, like the nose is embroidered, the tongue's embroidered, the eyes are embroidered, like the eyebrows are embroidered, like everything. All the details has like an embroidery around it. Um, it just it's ridiculous, like how how much details in this thing. Nice, nice. That's really cool, man. I mean, you know, you know. And 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 you're selling it how many per unit? Um, how much? Uh, Forty five. For okay. that, and that includes okay. shipping in the U.S. Okay. Yeah, it's a, mm -hmm. so it's a 12-inch plush. I mean, really, it's quality. It's been tested, so I can sell it on Amazon. Um, you know, later on, I also plan on doing a kids board book, uh, like as I mentioned, um, kind of like to accompany it later on. Um, so it's kind of like if you if you take my characters and, and Muppet baby eyes them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that worked, right? That worked. right exactly. Yeah, yeah it worked. Yeah. No, yeah, my daughter keeps asking when she's gonna get it back. <laughs> oh. uh, she's like, uh, it's like, Daddy got to work. I know. Yeah, you get, you get it back when we're done. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, hold on. What is this? Uh, the thing is, Jay comes out savvy, spend money to make money. There you go. Of course. Uh, my studio yeah, mate, Jeff Lilly says, right? "Pride possible stickers for a buck and sell my stickers and books." Yep, just makes the target. Sorry, right, there you go. Uh, the night wolf pushy looks cute. There you go. Yeah. All right. Nice. Hold on. Let me pull up the next campaign. All right. Randy, what do we have here? Uh, so this is issues two and three of Bullet Adventures. Uh, it's a really long series. What oh, was my chair just broke? Um, <laughs> Continuing on the story that we had a one shot a couple years ago, and then uh, just this past fall did issue one. And now this is for both two and three. Like I said, I'm giving away the full story from issue two uh, just to get people interested. And uh, print copies, PDFs, a couple uh, commission tiers from the artists involved. It's a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's kid safe. Um, my young boys like it. I like it too. I'm a big fan of the genre of superheroes. I grew up on that. So it's basically just what I would like in a comic. And we Finally, put it out there. Mm -hmm. Cool, very nice. Do you want me to play the video? Yeah, it's probably not worthwhile. <laughs> Come on, play <laughs> it. Work on it. Play it. That's true. All right. So hold on. Let me do this. Just... In the past, it used to be more complicated ones, but this one is very simple. Sometimes simple is better. Yep. Welcome back, Bullet fans. Randy Stone here, launching the brand new Kickstarter for Bullet Adventures number two and three. Along with the digital and print options, there are a selection of covers to choose from, a new t-shirt design, and our first foray into enamel pins. Be sure to check out the add-on section to include these or any of the previous Altruist Comics titles to your order. We'll see if we get the project we love on her, but this book is something that I love, and I know you're going to love it too. I'm going to keep this video short and sweet because we have so much stuff to show you below, including access to the full story from issue two. That way you can try it before you buy it. I really appreciate your support and look forward to sending you the books. Nice. Cool. There you go. Yeah. Like I said, sometimes short, you know, it works. 
Mm -hmm. Um, Rainy, you're in Canada? Yeah, West Coast. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Gets kind of funky with the conversions there, but uh, all you guys are getting a much better deal than what I'm putting up for. It's like when I say it's ten dollars, and it's oh, only seven dollars for you. Right. Uh, shipping sucks, uh, but I'm partnering with Jordan, who's a co-writer. He's going to actually ship out to the U.S. backers, so we're able to drop the shipping prices nice. for domestic U.S. prices mm -hmm. um, much cheaper, and so it does bring down the average uh, backing total. But at least uh, hopefully that encourages more people to step in and get it because I know that probably turned a lot of people away in previous campaigns. Yeah. The, the, yeah, yeah. Anything international, it doesn't matter where, if it's going out or in, it's always ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. To send, uh, to send two books from here in New York to, I, I man, I think it was Toronto, uh, mm -hmm. was 18 bucks to shipping yeah. alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was 11 ounces, an 11 ounce package. Wow. Mm -hmm. And did you use pirate ship or did you use? Uh... No, I use uh, stamps. Uh, you might want to try pirate ship because it tends to be a little bit cheaper. I don't know, dude. I get it. I get a nice discount through the post office with stamps. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being a, you know, a, a veteran at the post office, I get no discount from them directly. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that works, dude. You know, almost a dollar off on almost every package. Gotcha. Now, I think uh, you might want to look into a parachute. They might surprise you. Yeah. Yeah. Was it was it 18 to ship from New York to Toronto? Um, it might have been a little cheaper, but maybe within really? a buck. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll definitely check it out. Mm -hmm. Randy, how do you end up on the bottom of your own list? You're supposed to be on the top. <laughs> yeah. The more talented people up front. Oh, oh, I did co-write it, um, but I, yeah, all the all the crew that I'm working with, they're incredible. So I wanted to highlight them first, and I'll just kind of gotcha. pull the rear there. No, no, that, that's cool. That's cool. How long have you been working on Bullet Adventures? Uh, all of last year, basically. We had a different artist who was doing issue one, mm -hmm. and she was uh, running to a little bit of delays there, and she actually stepped aside. So we have uh, Nico and Fran filling in. Well, taking over, I guess, as of issue two. Uh, thankfully, it was at a point that made sense in the story as we moved from uh, one time period to the present day. Oh, and nice. uh, he's got a really modern approach. He did that uh, Batman pin up there. Uh, but yeah, Nico is incredible. He's brand new to comics. Uh, this is the first interior work he's ever done was issue two. And he's just like top tier talent wise. Uh, so I'm really excited to have him introduced to the world here. Very cool. Nice. Oh, Gemini mailers. Yeah. Cool. Um, Mr. C. Michael. Yep. Uh, what's 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 the discount code? Raging ten. Was it? It's raging ten. Yes. There you go. Or if you want to get ten percent off of your Gemini mailers. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. So if anyone uses Gemini or they or like buy stuff from them, use that code raging ten. It'll get you ten percent off. Yep. Hold on, go scroll, scroll back down a second. Scroll back down a second. That a little more. Randy, the kids, <laughs> the boys, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, did you have to bribe them to put on the masks? Or, <laughs> what's up, brother? Yeah, fun with that. that was a good day. Yeah, good. That was from good, a previous good. video that I did for Sensational Swan. So I had them running up there and climbing up into the treehouse thing that I built them. Nice, nice. 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 That's cool, man. I'm I'm totally digging that, dude. That should be in a video. That would capture yeah. people's attention. Yeah. Hell fucking yeah. Hell fucking yeah, man. Yeah. I, I got to be honest with you. I love the the negative use, the negative yeah. space use in that image. A lot of good feedback on that cover. Yeah. 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 No, man. It looks awesome, bro. I mean, you have what? How many days left you got? Uh, oh, you got 25 weeks. days. Oh, you got yeah. yeah, yeah, you you got plenty of time. Okay. Yeah, we'll hit the goal, I'm sure. I mean, I, I honestly yeah. set my funding goal very low. Um, mm -hmm. I know that we'll hit that. I've got kind of an internal goal that I'd like to reach, but um hopefully we'll <laughs> right. yeah, we all do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all do. Yeah, we all have that, you know, the goal on the page and what's the actual goal that's yeah. in your head. <laughs> One <Yeah>. million dollars. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh -oh. so I'm having a more realistic goal, but yeah, one million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, Ripper for three million. God damn it! Yeah, I know, right? Well, 
on <laughs> on his on his own website slash I, platform. Yeah, and PayPal. That's the key thing. <laughs> yes. PayPal. All right. Carlos, get ready. Nice. There we go. Carlos, you there? Carlos, hello. He's looking yeah. at us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can, yeah, can you guys video, can you guys hear me? Yes. Now we can, now we now. can hear you. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, give him a single. Give that video a single, bro. Come on. All right. I'm gonna play the video. Can, can, we'll can, 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 can you guys hear me? Yes, now yeah, we can. We can hear you now, yes. I think you might have a lag. That's probably what it is. But I'm gonna play the video so we can we can watch that and then you can uh chime in. to our, our our 10th comic book release in our crowdfunding campaign for for our comic book um uh, bloodstone 2 uh the title is called uh, the bleeding moon um you know just uh just to tell you a little bit uh about the campaign um you know all the funds that we uh, we, we receive we're going to be using to uh, uh to make comic books um trading cards and a bunch of other prizes we're going to list on the on the campaign but um you know just to tell you a little bit about a uh, bloodstone if you don't know about it um he's an assassin called uh, bishop cross he comes in contact with uh with a fallen angel that has a very uh powerful stone uh this bloodstone that uh that you know turns him into this blood guardian and um an issue two uh the it's called the bleeding moon uh the bleeding moon is this very uh this very uh this event that only takes place every few thousand years and it's uh it's a time where all these dark entities enter into the into the city of god's land and that's where you see bloodstone uh you know jump into action and um you're gonna see the villain called uh moon blood he's a very strong villain the bloodstone but um just want to tell you guys, you know, uh, thanks a lot for checking out uh, the, the campaign. And uh, I hope you guys could be a part of it. Uh, we're going to be having, you know, all these different prizes. You know, anything that uh, that helps, uh, you know, uh, even if you just spread the word, it really helps us. So, uh, you know, thanks a lot for checking out the campaign. And, uh, you know, always stay wicked out there until our next campaign. Thanks. All right. All right. Cool. All right. Thanks. All right, Carlos. Oh, no, Carlos. Okay. Okay. I think he dropped again. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Let me see. Oh yeah, he yeah he's out. <laughs> yeah, he's out. We lost him. Yeah, we lost him. All right, but everybody, Carlos's campaign looks cool. He's in the show notes. Go check him out. Uh, hopefully he'll be back in a couple minutes, and we'll bring him back up. But for now, I'm gonna pull this down. So. We'll do that. All right. Yeah, but yeah, he's not. Yeah, he's not here. So, all right, Carlos, come back whenever you can. <laughs> Carlos, come back. Come back <laughs> to me. <laughs> Sorry, just it got in my head. Sorry, I was in the car this morning. Baby, come back. 
Davey come back. There you go. Nice. Oh. Well, all right. So listen, <laughs> since you know, campaigns look great. You know, go back them. Yeah. Um, so look, I got, I got, I got another question for you guys. Uh oh. So, what's your next move in comics, right? So I know Rob's doing a toy. Um, you know, what are the rest of you guys doing? You know, what's your next move? You know, um, actually, Rob, after the toy, what's the next move? Uh, <laughs> no, I go right back. I thought you got away with it. Yeah. Uh oh, he's got it right there. He's got uh, it. So we're looking at um, 3D printing model figurines. Nice. Nice. Very nice. Are they going to come? Um, are they going to? The are you selling the files or the or the uh, or the piece itself? Well, that's that's. Well, I'm trying to get the piece itself uh, down. So I'm think I'm looking at casting uh, okay. for, for molds because uh, doing on your own. What's that? Are you gonna cast it on your own? Um, well, I'm looking at prices. I, I'm not gonna do it myself. Um, I, okay. but I uh, I'm looking um, for different um, vendors to to work with. Uh, Skeleton Crew, who's doing the the plush. Um, had mentioned that they do it, so I'm kind of waiting on a quote for them. I'm um, gonna kind of get a shop around, and get some comparisons. Um, but yeah, I was debating on how to do the um, the STO files for doing that as well for like a digital. Yeah. Wait, did you say skeleton crew? Skeleton. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there another crew? Well, there's a skeleton crew. Yeah, that does that does some merchandise stuff. That's what I was wondering. I was like, that's a cool, that's a you know, the kind okay. of like that's like oh. And we lost somebody else. Oh, oh we lost JD. Rosario looks like you have been promoted. Oh no, nice. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Carlos is back. All right. Carlos, you good there? Carlos, come back. <laughs> uh, we're here. We're here waiting for you, Carlos. Yes. Yeah, you're a little frozen there. Yeah, he's he's a little bit laggy. Can you, All right. you can can you guys hear me? Yeah, I, I don't know what what the what happened. Yeah. You probably listen, man. It's I'm, it's so, like I'm self, sorry about that, guys. Interference, you know, you had a butterfly fly by, and that was it. All right, yeah. All of a sudden, I everybody went blank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gotcha. All right, hold on. Um, well, we we're in the middle of uh, answering a question, so let's uh, let's do Randy next, and then we'll move on to Carlos, and then I'll. I'll I'll go through the campaign, and then we'll we'll pull up your campaign again and go go through it again. That's but Randy, good. Ask what do you think? Uh, what's your next move in comics? I've got more bullet adventures coming. I've got a couple other one shot sort of things. I'd like to move into publishing other people's work. Um, that's oh, kind nice. of the next steps for me. Mm -hmm. I see these action figures, Carlos. Uh, the one that you've got as a stretch goal. I'd love to see my characters as action figures, but I really don't know if uh, more than a couple people would buy them. But I'd like mm -hmm. to have them, and my kids be playing yeah. with them and stuff. So. I mean, that'd be I cool. actually, um, I, I actually make, I actually make my own uh, action figures. You know. Okay. Nice. And is you, that you using have, like a previously uh, existing figure that you customize, or right from scratch? Uh, I actually, I sculpt. You know, I'll use like, uh, just, just like a like a body. You know, and. That's it. We're hanging on that answer. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he was just starting to get to yeah. the juicy stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, all right, Carlos, are you still there? Because you lagged. You lagged out for a second. I think we we lost some more. <laughs> yeah, Carlos, come back. Oh no. Yeah. I see the lips moving, but nothing coming out. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Oh look! So this is the code. If you're gonna get any um, any product from that company, from the region ten. Okay. All right. Now he's frozen. 
right. All right. Uh, Carlos, why I have to reboot his system? All right. Or cell oh, phone. Well, yeah, his cell phone. Or yeah. cell phone, yeah. Uh, StreamYard does not work well with cell phones. How, you, got, you guys see me now, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Now you're on lag. You, you oh, no okay. longer Good. lag. Yeah, yeah. So you were in the middle of asking the question about like, how do you create that? Are you uh, 3D pr printing them or are you uh, sculpting them yourself? <laughs> With a solar flare. Yeah. Yeah. Ian Pulse. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's definitely lagging hard because yeah, of lagging himself. really hard, yeah. Alright. He's frozen again now. Yeah. Okay, no, okay now, now now I see you guys. Okay. Good. <laughs> That's better. So Carlos, you were in the middle of answering a question. Are you are you 3D printing or are you so are you sculpting those figures? Okay, I'm just make I just making sure. No, yeah, actually sculpting, and then I, uh, uh, I make a mold out of the, you know, the the final sculpt, and then I I make uh, I make action figures out of them. Ah, uh, okay, cool. You know, but so I've seen I've seen some options in three D printing, which uh, it looks pretty cool, um, mm -hmm. but I also see that causes a lot of problems too. There's a lot of malfunctions with those three D printers. I see people. Uh, there's a there's a Facebook group that that deals only with three D printing. The mm -hmm. if you get like a cheaper three D printing, it's it's a nightmare. Mm. Well, uh, do you mean do you mean STL? Uh, do you mean excuse me, filament or resin? <laughs> no. Hold on, Rob. Hold that yeah, up. Yeah, the what filament. Is the, the filament. Yeah. The filament. That's why you don't want to do when it comes to figures. You want to do resin. You don't want to do uh, filament. So you can see how like the this one it did not completely print all the way through, and the sword did not come through. But oh, yeah, this filament. Is yeah. Print. Yeah. yeah. So this, is, this these are resin. Those are resin. Yep. There's yeah. no articulation on them, right? It's just a sculpture. This is just a sculpture. Yeah. 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 This is not a figure. It's just a. It's a full full body, which is a whole other thing for a six inch figure. Um, you gotta like you see like how there's like holes in them that you gotta mm -hmm. like drain out like or or else yep. it'll cost all too much because of how thick mm -hmm. and you know and right. how much it's printing. Wow. Um. Uh. Rob, if you only want to make a few of them. It's not going to cost much to buy silicone. Go go to uh, go to Amazon. Look at look at Smooth On, right? Okay. And you can buy simple one to one silicone, um, and just try to do it on your own, right? You could do a one piece silicone mold that you split in four parts because you got the you got the sword sticking out, mm -hmm. all right? And right. then um, and then you could buy different types of resin. Um, Smooth On, they have different different chemical balances for resin. Some are a little bit more flexible, some are more more rigid, like an ABS, yeah. like a like a hard Lego, right? Okay. Those are too brittle. <clears throat> but you could mix, and then you can also add, just for argument's sake, you can add like a, a like a bronze tint, right? And you can only produce a, a few bronze pieces if you if you just want um, a few special ones, you know, if you don't right. think you get a full production run out of it. Yeah. So I, I want to ask Carlos because a friend of mine he also makes figures like that. How many pieces can you get out of a mold? Mm, the pulse, yep. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, yeah, that, that's a good question. You know, the those silicone molds, they don't uh, they don't hold up too well. You know, uh, yeah. if you look at the old He-Man, how they make them, it's out of a steel mold. That's why they're able to produce so many. You know, so right. I would say right. you could at least make uh, maybe a good 50 to 100 with a mold. And then but it's it starts to right? deteriorate. It starts to deteriorate because of the heat, you know, when you uh, when you mix uh, the plastics to pour it in, it's just it gets so hot that it, it kills the mold, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, gotcha. But there, that's but there are silicone molds that that can. So that that's the only hold. issue you're gonna have with that, you know. It's not gonna be a a, a long lasting mold that's gonna last. Mm -hmm. No, but there are silicone molds that last up to 450 degrees plus. So you can use silicone molds uh, that do like you know aluminum's pewters and stuff like that. 
Yeah, no, I, I've tried them, but even then, we need to, they still they still deteriorate over time. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, with not, the pulls, yeah, with the pulls, definitely, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, and then you need a you need a little vacuum chamber pot to get the bubbles out of it. Right. Yeah. 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 Injection molding. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you guys are talking about? No, no injection molding. Um, yeah. Calderon, I sent you something in. Uh, I sent you something in the um, in your in your messenger. If you want to pull up a quote for my action figure, and, and they can see what how much injection molding prices come down to. Gotcha. Hold on. You see it, the quote piece. No, I got you, brother. You know, you know. What this no, no, I don't know if you see it. it. I'm just, I'm just asking. If you didn't see it, then I would send it again. No, no, I got you. There you go. You know, I was, I was, I was quoted uh, a long time ago by a, a toy company to make one figure. They wanted to charge me like twenty thousand dollars to make a prototype. No, well, Jesus. you can see right, you can see right there what the prices are for a chibi and a four inch, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, for uh, for the four inch figure, I don't know if you can do it any bigger on there. Um, no, it's I'll, not giving me an option. So I'll read it off to you. For the for a four inch figure, right, two thousand pieces, uh, which is the the middle line on the figure. Two thousand pieces is twenty one hundred bucks, right? Uh, I got a quote after that. For a six-inch figure, which the six-inch was going to be just a little bit more than twenty-three thousand bucks, so that didn't include the uh, the shipping, but the packaging for a simple blister card, she said, was only going to be another four hundred dollars on top of that for the two thousand figures, right? Mm -hmm. So you see how much it is for the mold charge. The mold charge alone was going to be almost five thousand wow. dollars, and to print out a single prototype, uh, it's going to be four sixty-two. So when I pull out the six-inch figure of them, um, I'm going to be running a campaign for at least $31,000 for just one single figure, right, to cover shipping, cover incidentals, and hopefully covers Kickstarter fees. Mm -hmm. And this is the this is the figure you, you, you're producing? That's, yeah, that's the six-inch figure, dude, right? Uh, no, no, that's – shit, that's an earlier one because we, we blew up on the shield. I don't know if the other – there's a picture there with the bigger shield at all. Hold on. No, so that's that's our exploded views of them. My thing crapped up. It's all right. Uh, anyway, right. don't don't worry about it. So then, look at the chibi though. So then the chibi figure, again, two thousand units. Um, the sample cost, right? So that's that's not the final cut piece. So that's just the first piece that they send to you. Um, that's one, a buck sixty nine. The mold charge on that is three sixty nine, and it's almost four grand. If that mm -hmm. didn't include packaging and that did not include the shipping charge, so th those are just for the pieces. And that chibi is about two inches tall. Is it and two inches? Those, those, what's up? No, it says three inches in height. Oh, three inches. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so three inches. Um. Funny thing is, all right, so three inches, a Funko Pop is almost four, right? Right. And then here I am in Chinatown last week. Not Chinatown, excuse me. I'm in, I'm in Flushing, Queens, and there's a, a huge Korean element over there. And I'm in one of the shops, and I see two-inch chibis. Two-inch mm. chibis going for uh, 10 bucks a pop, and they're eating it up. I don't know anything about the product, but they kept restocking the shelf like it was – you know, Coke. And, and, mm. and I'm like, man, they're buying it like nothing, right? Is it, am I selling to the wrong element? Do we not understand it? Um, are, we, are, we, are we going into the wrong marketplace, right? Because not only that, you remember the old school gumball machines? Yes. So yes. they've upgraded them. They call them Gash Coin, right? Um, something, I, I think I'm pronouncing it right. There you go. There you go. Who said it? Okay, so you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. These brand new fangled, uh, uh, um, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, 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 tchotchke machines, right? And they're putting, you know, ten coins a pop in there and a dollar each. 
and they got mm. it set up like like it's soda machine stacked three on top of each other, eight feet deep, right? And I'm like, oh my god, they're eating this all up, eating this all up. And where 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 did you see this? In Flushing. In Flushing. Yeah. Mm. Okay. You know, you know the you know the Target Mall that's they over there. That's the flow. Yeah, yeah. I know. I've been there. Yeah. Before. So, so mm. the store is called Tesso Life. T e s o l i f e. It looks like a CVS pharmacy, right? right? You you go in the place though, and you know you've got you got candies, snacks, but then you've got all these manga and anime figures, the statuettes, the maquettes on the back of the wall, like it's the old, you know, cigarette racks behind the counter at CVS. And and you know they're buying they're buying their groceries they're buying their their peach flavored soda right mm -hmm. and 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 they're going into the into the coin machines and coming out like okay you know that's their that's their Sunday run to pick up milk and I'm like these guys it's ingrained in the in the everyday experience you know we don't have that here if we had that here if we had that synergy here if we had mm -hmm. that or or that way to get into not even big box stores right but but you know, pharmacies bodegas smaller chains right chamber of commerce uh, uh, um conglomerates the way they do man we'd be able to survive doing this alone and not having to worry about a day job well you know unfortunately that sort of thing takes you know Time. I know. Yeah, I know. time. Well, it takes more money because that's all. The, when they talk about skin in the game, that's skin in the that's game. Skin in the game. Mm -hmm. that's, okay. So, so let's that's look at money. let's look at that. Right. Let's look at that for a second. What and and a simple chibi, right? It's still going to cost around five thousand bucks. Yeah. Right for two thousand pieces. Can I move two thousand pieces? I don't know. Can I move enough to get my money back? Yeah. Yeah. I know. I I can do that. If I'm selling them at ten bucks a pop, maybe fifteen. Maybe including mm -hmm. them in my own mystery boxes. Maybe using them in in combo deals at conventions. Maybe finding ways to do uh, uh, incentives or inc incentivize people on different kickstarters. Probably I can move through maybe sixty percent of it, right? But then, because I have this addictive personality, it's not I'm going to live off of that, right? I'm just going to roll back that. I'm going to roll that back in to make more product. Right, and I think that's a that's something a lot of us experience. Um, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> we don't know how to parcel out our percentages for ourselves to reward ourselves. Right? We just do that. Right? But but how many of us don't? I know I don't. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I know mm -hmm. I don't. Um, everything yeah. gets rolled back in. Well, I do buy myself one very inexpensive meal per campaign. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. One very inexpensive meal. You need meal. to step up. Yeah, I, I take, I take my way out to thank her for putting up with my crap for about a month. I go to bed and my wife sees me pissed off. She goes, how many backers did you lose? <laughs> How many dropped out today? <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, uh, talk about stepping up the game. Um, that was the that was the question. What's your next move in comics? How what are you looking to do next? You know, whether it be trades, toys, whatever. So Carlos, it was your turn. So uh, what what are you looking to do next? Sure. Yeah. You know, uh, I always. Uh, uh, use comics more as just advertisement, you know, but, uh, the bigger picture is, you know, I guess for all of us, uh, uh, you know, yeah, moving to merchandise. Uh, you know, I, I, I went into to doing action figures on my characters. I moved into trading cards. Mm -hmm. I've done t-shirts. Uh, you know, eventually, you know, you want to get, a somebody to make a movie out of it. You know, you always got to look for the, the bigger picture, you know, a video game. Cause you know, comics is, uh, to me, it's you know, it's 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 just advertisement. You know, the 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 big the bigger game is, uh, you know, uh, you know, movies like Marvel does. You know, or yeah. even TV series like The Walking Dead. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. A TV series, or you know, that's the uh, that's the big thing now. You know, everybody, nobody. I think the biggest thing now is uh, Netflix. You know, nobody. I mean, I think more people watch those shows than uh, 
actually going to the movies. And then they get mad oh. when they get canceled. <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, always, always trying to expand. You know, not just stay in comics. You know. Mm-hmm. Right. True. True. All right. Cool, Mister Lanning. Uh, mostly this year is going to be with other people, and I'm excited about some of the stuff I have coming forward. Uh, some stuff that I'm hired to do, some stuff that I'm doing uh, in partnership also. But uh, the next move is going to be collecting stuff because uh, it's time for me to write, and it's time okay. for me to do my thing. So that's that's what's the next step. Not going to be this year, but it's mm-hmm. going to be it's going to be uh, closing in. So. Now, will you be running that, or will uh, Nita be running that Kickstarter? Because you were like, I'm going to sit back and watch you. First. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens, right? <laughs> uh, no, I guess I. I why, why do you think I come on here? I don't come on here to ask questions of stuff I know already. I, know <laughs> ask I have no idea. Well, that's what I say. So I, I'm learning. That's what I'm, I'm taking time to learn. So yeah. So yeah, I probably will run it because she'll probably want to charge me. And uh, I don't have enough to pay for it. So. The honeydew list is going to grow, baby. The honeydew yeah. list is going to grow. That's how you pay for oh, it. Oh, my goodness. It has right. to be See, I told you she's going to charge him. <laughs> I will run it. She's saying I will charge him is what she's mm-hmm. saying. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Listen, you can just tell her. So you've been paying all these years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would only make her charge double. So well. That would make her charge double. Yo, don't, yo, so don't you haven't paid enough. Double, he's gonna get his ass beat. You see, I'm not putting <laughs> in those positions, Lanny. That's wrong that he's doing that, man. Can we get a callback around to what was said earlier? Happy wife, happy life. Yeah, yeah I totally live right. by that. Yeah, man. <laughs> Three fifty. Oh. Ooh, that's expensive, son. You're supposed to get a little <laughs> discount. You know what I mean? Oh. That's AT and T discount. You ain't getting it. Oh, That's it. God, tell her, tell her you got, tell her you got fourteen quarters for her. It's okay. You're lucky. I'm lucky if she gives me the regular price. It doesn't double charge me. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, Joe. What are you looking to do to to, to level up this year? Or well, what? Do you, what you know? Yeah. Keeping fingers crossed. If and the and the if is if I get the proper funding. The one mm-hmm. thing that I've been working on in secret would be 100% out, and that is a role-playing game. Okay. Huh? We have nice. a, I have a old-school pencil and paper role-playing game for primetime Saturday night. Mm-hmm. And we're try- I still have to finish uh, writing the first module. The system was done by Lockdown Games here, and it was a good partnership. It's a standalone game that is compatible to other uh role play games in the lockdown games libraries so if you pick up my you could take my the characters from my role playing game and put them in other versions of their games perfectly fine so it was a good deal that that worked out but it is really a standalone type deal i've been looking at trying to get like maps done and all the you know the bells and whistles to get it all nicely boxed together but the main core manual should be out this year Okay, cool. Very nice. Very nice. Congratulations. I like that, man. That, that's a good one. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. cool. that's that's something I'm looking into for Oswald. Mm. Writing a writing a manual and doing a lot of just I just haven't chosen because I know they had a bunch of problems with the uh, OGL for uh, D&D. Like, mm-hmm. Those dudes went ballistic for the last month. Woof. That was real interesting. You know, it's uh, yeah, D&D, they, they tried to change the contract on everybody. Wizard of the Coast. Yeah, Wizard, Wizard of the Coast. Coast. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Wizard mm-hmm. of the Coast. And because they had, I guess, something from 2000, uh, 2020. Oh, no, 2000. They uh, they had um, <clears throat> an open source contract where people could just use the original game. And then they wanted to change it where the con- the new contract was just terrible for everyone. So yeah. I don't know. And those guys Well, exploded. the people who used the old, the, uh, the old open, open source, their games mm-hmm. were starting to become more popular than D and D, so they were up here like, "Oh, we could curtail this by limiting what you can do, and you could claim it as an quote unquote original game." Yeah, yeah, it, it was. It's a little nuts. It's interesting as far as if you look into it, it's it's interesting. But anyway, Jay, what are you looking? Uh, what are you looking to do? So, to so you saw you saw a part of that, right? To do yeah. the action figure, I'd love to do the uh, the the 
campaign for it. Um, two things are holding me back is hopefully, you know, China doesn't invade Taiwan and the geopolitical ramifications <laughs> don't keep my shit from, from not getting produced, right? Because that's been one of the things that uh, has kept me from pulling the trigger. Second is fear um, that I'm not going to hit, you know, a 30,000 plus goal for a figure. Um, mm -hmm. I've never hit, you know, five figures, let alone, you know, lower, upper, lower tier five figures, right? 30 grand. I don't know where the fucking place is. Um, mm -hmm. um, you know, we were going to charge about for the, uh, for the six inch fig. We were thinking 35 bucks, which would have the shipping baked into it. Um, you know, use our, use our offset copies as bonuses, um, for the figure stuff like that we got different hands set up if i can't do that then you know five grand for a chibi is more something that i can pull out of my pocket or you know do a smaller campaign for and, and put the rest of the skin out of my pocket um shit if the wife is not listening um but, <laughs> but you know prior to the pandemic i had built up the war chest to to run conventions and you know the last convention i ran was a a, a twenty thousand square square foot venue you know, we had over 175 vendors. Um, I, I would love to fucking build up the war chest to, to pull that off again. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the pandemic totally derailed that, totally derailed a, a lot of people's stuff. But, you know, that was the level up. That was the fucking level up. And, um, you know, now that venue is a, is an a American Ninja uh, a training gym. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, funny because we, you know, I, I'm a big nostalgia guy, and we drove past it last weekend, which would have been the three year anniversary of when we did it the last mm -hmm. time. And all you see are those, you know, the med, the mailed railings and the and the curved run board, and I'm just like, fuck, man, fuck. Mm. Well, you listen, uh, Mocha. I, I applied to get in this year, and, and of course they turned me down. Really? So, uh, yeah, sons of bitches. Like, you know, sons of bitches. But so, not, the museum is not up anymore. Where are they holding it? Uh, they hold. They have a venue. Uh, I think it's like on 18th Street and like 9th or 10th Avenue. It's got to be small. No, well, it's three floors. So it's okay. like three floors, and it, yeah, it's tight. The last, I mean, it was like a because you know how it is. They charge four fifty for a table, but they only charge five dollars to get in the door to the consumer. Right. You know, so it's cheap to get in. So the place was always packed whenever I got there. But you, you know, it's 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 all small press stuff. So yeah, you know, yeah, you know, no, we uh, we charged for the tables. We charged um a buck fifty uh, for regular for a, a six by eight space, and we were charging three hundred for a ten by ten space. You know, we had 175 vendors in the spot, man. Um, mm -hmm. That was enough for us to make money on. You know, everything that came through the door was great. Gravy. Yep. gravy, dude. You know, we had Power Rangers. We had Pokemon voice actors there. Uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, intergenerational uh, uh, geek liberties that, uh, you know, the parents could bring their kids to and and, and make money off of. But nice. it's it's expensive, you know. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. It's fucking expensive, man. You know, uh, between me and my partners, you know, we came up with thirty-three grand to put that show up. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. no, that's yeah, that's yeah, that's definitely a thing. Uh, it was a fucking show, man! Yeah. It's a awesome fucking show. It was no. a three-day show, so I'd love to do that again. I'd love to. Mm -hmm. All right, listen, we can talk after the show. Uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> if you guys ever get one going, I'd love to come as a guest. <laughs> where, where are you? Where are you, Rob? Uh, Western Pennsylvania. So it's only a six oh. hour drive for me. Dude, we had people from Penn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Carlos, mm -hmm. where are you at? Oh, I'm down in I'm down in Florida, so I think I'm far from you guys. Yeah. But yeah, you know what? Yeah. If yeah. I if I was closer to you guys, yeah, you know, to, to hit up some conventions. I think you're closer than I am. You know, that, would, that, that would be awesome. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Yeah. I, I don't think I drive as far as as Randy, you know, uh, up Upper West. Um, yeah. But you know, I've done the drive from here, you know, for MegaCon. That Orlando's an eighteen hour drive. Joe knows I've done the drive from here to Chicago. Mm -hmm. That's fucking. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a twelve hour drive for me. I've driven to Texas uh, from here to Dallas. That's a twenty six hour drive. 
that. Um, I've driven to Tennessee. Um, wow. that, that was a haul also. So, you know, landing, you're not far from there. I can do, you know, Nyland's cons and shit. Um, the thing is, no. what is Fan Expo? Don't doing call now? it that. Don't call it that. <laughs> Nolens. No, you don't call it no, that. No, no. You want to you want to point yourself out as a tourist? Call it Nolens. Go right ahead. Yeah, I see. I get it. That's the same way with New York. Right, so, so I understand. I respect that, baby. Uh, so so but so see. How do you pronounce it? New Orleans. Okay. Oh, okay. Man. You get yeah. you you enunciate. Yeah, I hear it's you. A, you well, <laughs> New Orleans. New Orleans. It, it is like two L-E-N-Z, words. E N Z. New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. New Orleans, New Orleans. Not, not New Orleans. Yeah. No, no, you're gonna New Orleans. New Orleans. No, you only no. do New Orleans if it's in a song. It's oh, like if you're Louis no. Armstrong, it's like okay. you know, how, what's it like to miss New Orleans? You only do yeah. that in a song. But <laughs> okay. New Orleans is usually <laughs> New Orleans. All right. Rob, New Orleans. I wanna yeah. I wanted to ask you, what's the production time on the uh on the um plush? Uh so from the end of the campaign, to, I I'm guesstimating from what they've told me, I'll probably have them in hand in July. Okay, well, that's cool. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay. You know, because yeah, I, I was talking to Tom Hutchison and like, I oh, think yeah, got... with his figures that it's been well over a year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he yeah, hasn't yeah. received the critter figures yet. Nope. No. He's next oh. in line. He's waiting for uh, I think the um, Purgatory figure. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 And, and there probably a, a four month production time and then shipping. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you think you, you double that, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> double that. Cuz cuz you know what it is, it's Chinese New Year, so it's 2 weeks and not doing any work. Good for them. Everybody yeah, deserves some time off. Um right. but the chibis, the chibis are coming one two three because they're going to be shipped uh, if I do that, they'd be shipped unboxed, you know, in in air freight and could be here within 2 weeks of a final production day. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's another one we could talk about. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. Ah, Jesus Christ! I just love spending money. Um, oh, that's what's fucking wrong. I eat with my eyes, man. I'm a yeah. fat kid, but also with fucking toys and comics and shit. You know, <laughs> you know, I could do that. And my wife was like, "The fuck you can." <laughs> no, I know. I feel your pain. I feel your pain. Yeah. Bro, oh my god! Seriously, whenever, whenever I get the, the fully fleshed out idea, right? Not the outline, not the presentation outline. Once I bring to her all the stuff, right? Uh, because let's be honest, she is the boss. Um, uh. Uh, I, you know, I bring it to her and I'm like, babe, I think I can, blah, 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 blah. but can you sell it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I'll buy it. Sure. <laughs> sure. You know? Yeah. So, Listen. Maybe that's how it starts though, right? You, you know, we put out our books that we're like fans of the, you know, whatever book we're putting out and, you know, we want to see it out there. Like, you know, you like, for, you know, I want to see my book, look just like something that's on the shelves, you know? Yes. So, and, and I'm, and I'm a fan yeah. of it. So I know other people are going to, you know, that's how we all, I'm sure we're all feeling the same way about our stuff. So why? Yeah. Hell who? Yeah. People would just like us. will buy this shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the things that so many of us don't understand. It's not only do you have to learn the craft, right? You have to learn how to stay alive to keep producing the craft. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I went into this with college business one one right. And everything came, um, with losing money, but losing money was pretty much me paying my dues to learn stuff because there wasn't a school for this. Right. And, and, and we have to focus on the numbers just as much as we focus on the creativity side, because if not, we're not going to be able to produce more content. That is the truth. And a lot of people don't understand that. They, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Part. As an indie, you know, uh, yeah, yeah right. definitely. As a as an indie, you know, as being an independent, you have to have a a business side too. You know, you can't just have the artistic. You know, you you gotta you you have to know how to survive. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, just yeah. hold on a second. Uh, Randy has to, has to go. Randy it was a pleasure. Randy it was a pleasure having you. One more time though, please let everybody know where they can find you your work, sir. Uh, well, obviously the Kickstarter live right now for Bullet Adventures too. Um, Social media at Altruist Comics, pretty much everywhere. So yeah, check me out online, altruistcomics.com. I've got a shop there that has got some of my past work, also all available as add-ons for the campaign right now. All right, cool. 
Thank you, Randy. Uh, okay. It was a pleasure. Nice being, nice being you, Randy. Good luck, bud. Nice being you in person. We're friends on Facebook. We never actually had a chat yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice to meet you in person. <laughs> yeah, man. Take care, right. guys. You're always welcome. Take, Take care. care. Thank you. All right. All right. Now, now we're down to we're down to six. And then there were six. And then there were six. There you go. <laughs> Carlos, you gotta so, say to the end, Carlos. You gotta say to the end, bro. Keep that, keep that internet. Uh, yeah, I know. I think, I, I think I'm. Am I, am I killing everybody with this this bad connection? No. Well, you, no, you're, well now, you good time, dude. Well, yeah, now you're, you're fine. As a matter of <laughs> fact, I'm gonna pull up. I'm gonna pull up your campaign real quick. Um, so you can walk us through it really fast. We played the video. Sure. Yeah, I, I missed everybody's campaign. I'm sorry about that. It's all right. So you got issue two. What's going on here? Yeah, uh, well, this is issue two of Bloodstone, you know, uh, and uh, like I said before, I'm sorry. Uh, he He's an, uh, an assassin called Bishop Cross. Uh, you know, he comes in contact with this uh, fallen angel having uh, this this uh, deadly stone and becomes his new blood guardian. So that's, uh, you know, that's pretty much the premise of the of the of the book, you know, and, and each book he's fighting uh, a different villain that's trying to. Uh, get the stone away from them. But yeah, uh, we have the uh, the campaign. It's the 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 two comics. Um, uh, we have a variant cover that actually a fan sent in, uh, Edwin. Uh, so sometimes you know I'll use a a fan piece as a as a variant cover, you know, just because uh, I always always appreciate what the fans send in. And uh, yeah, we have a, a bunch of different prizes. Uh, you know, action figures, uh, trading cards, uh, hologram cards, and I I produce all that uh, you know in house. Nice. So, how many issues are, is the series going to be eventually? And yeah, yeah, we're always uh, uh, so far only uh got two issues because you know mm -hmm. I, I I do all the comics, so it takes me a little bit. You know, I do all the colors, the coloring, the text, the you know everything to do with the comics. I, I do it. So it takes nice. me a little bit longer to produce an issue. Mm -hmm. The figure looks really cool. Yeah, and and that yeah, that's the action figure. It's actually it's, it's articulated and everything. Nice. nice. And those are some of the comic cons I attended. You know, I have uh, it's been a few years since I since I've attended a comic con. Yeah, since the pandemic, it was you know everything yeah. went uh, went crazy. No, trust me, we all know. Yeah. All right, cool. And yeah, those are all our. So far, we got uh, uh, ten uh, ten comic books for the company, all all, all different uh, characters. Mm. Nice. And I sell I sell some of my original art too. Sometimes I, I, you know, some backers like like to collect it. All right, cool. Very nice. I mean, um, so is this just a, a two part story? Like just the two issues, or are you, are you going to be continuing? No, yeah, continuing. You know, each uh, each character is, uh, you know, it's going to be like a Batman. You know, each character could go on for a hundred issues. You know. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Well, you got another forty-two days. You have four twenty-five, but you got plenty of time. So you, I'm sure you're going to make that up. Yeah, I, I guess you know I just try to keep advertising on, uh, you know, on, on Twitter and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, whatever yeah. social media you can no listen man you just got to keep hustling but uh, yeah, yeah i always appreciate you know anybody that just uh right right just hang in yeah. there listen exactly just just keep hustling that's all it takes just got to keep hustling you know a a ask right. rob who i think i've seen on like ten thousand podcasts at one point <laughs> I mean, right, that's, yeah. that's just it. You, you, during campaign well, well. time, you will see me everywhere, and then afterwards, I disappear for a while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you do, yeah. Battery. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, battery. Yeah, because I, that, I that's still, what it I takes. Mean, yeah, I remember. I got tired. I was like, I will see Rob like three shows a day. I was like, yo, I'm tired. Just you Jeez. know, just even thinking about it, I'm like, yo, that's crazy. <laughs> you know. All right, all right, yeah. gentlemen. We're at the we're at the top of the second hour, so uh, we we made it. We're done. So already, thank you. Already, yeah, already. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it uh, just seems like we just got on. 
no, we're, we're good. Anyway, gentlemen, this was awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Um, let's start with Carlos. Where can we find you and your work, sir? Uh, uh, on my website is uh, w, uh, www.wicked-comics.com. You know, we have everything there, all the comics, uh, the action figures, trading cards, you know, everything I sell there. And uh, But and also in Barnes & Nobles, Amazon, Comixology. So I'm pretty much everywhere. Nice. Right, cool. Rob, where can we find you and your work, sir? Yeah, so uh, LoneWolfComics.com is my website. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at LoneWolfComics. Uh, you can find me personally at Rob Maltieri on all three of those. Um, if you want to go to the campaign and get yourself a plushie or a comic or two, um, go to LoneWolfComics.com slash plushie, and that'll take you to that very long Kickstarter link that they love to give you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And it's all, it's also in the show notes. All the links to all the various campaigns in the show notes. So you just click on that, take you right to the campaign, go buy yourself a cool plushie or some cool books, you know. So there you go. <laughs> Mr. Lanning, where can they find you, sir? Uh, as always, uh, you can find me on Linktree, backslash C. Mike Lanning, take you out on my socials, uh, profile, you know, um, all that nice stuff, drawings and blah, blah, blah. Also, uh, Look for uh, Doghouse on Kickstarter, which is go get notified. It's launching, I think, at the end of March, at the end of February, beginning of March. I did some art on that, and of course, dispatches from outside the box on the IndieComicsNetwork.com every Tuesday at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, where we scour the corners of uh, Geekdom to inspire you to create outside the box. And yes, that includes create comics, JD. So, uh, okay, sure. Anyway, um, so what, what, what's your next subject? Anyway, uh, we're talking about the circus this week. Jesus. Anyway, oh, um, not, the <laughs> not the clowns. Not the clowns. No, we did no. the clowns already. We talked about the circus, so there's more. Now it's just the circus. Okay, got you. Yeah. Uh, Joe, where can they find you? Your work, sir. Right there on the screen, that link tree that you see right there. You will find the company website. You will find both YouTube pages, both the gaming one as well as from the Desolate Small Press Publisher, where I have been working on primetime Saturday night over these past couple of weeks, and I still owe people a couple of reviews of some independent work coming soon here. I just haven't sat down and read what I just got in the mail. Kind of sort of like the first two volumes of the last Oswell Chronicles that I got, plus issue five of Equal Raven. Nice. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, say no more, say no more. <laughs> Plus, a <couple> <laughs> other stuff. Plus a couple other stuff as well. And that's where you can find me. Everything is right there on that link tree. Nice. All right, cool. Mr. Rosario. Unstoppablecomics.com. All roads lead to and from Unstoppable Comics. You hit the website, you can find all the social media links, what's coming up, uh, and what we still have in stock. All right, cool. Well, you can find me on here every Sunday, pretty much. Sometimes, most most Sundays. Um, and I should probably get one of those link tree things, but you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those places, DeviantArt, all in the JD Calderon, and the OswaldChronicles.com, and TallTalesOnline.com. But most importantly, you can go check out the Kickstarters. All in the links. Go check them out. Thank you, everybody, for being here. You guys are all awesome. You guys, Rob. Thank you incredible as always thank you so much uh looking forward to everything you're putting out uh mr rosario yeah i don't get an incredible as always <laughs> well, <laughs> like, let me tell you i know for the next two weeks you're not going to be here right uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. and i know only one person is going to miss you and that's going to be you um <laughs> oh, oh, hey, wow. oh, with oh, every oh, shot oh. so far yes thank you so much. Wow, wow, <laughs> why, why you got healed with a gut so quickly <laughs> well you know he begs for it he begs for the you abuse beg for, I'm sorry. Beg for it I, you I, beg for it you know my it. job and my job is when, making sure i allow the people around me to shine and if that means <laughs> making myself the target then i'll make myself the target guy okay without okay. me you're not gonna be as bright <laughs> I'm only joking. You know we will miss you, sir. You know we're gonna. You like son of a bitch. You know that. <laughs> but, but, but all seriously, uh, seriousness. Congratulations. Thank you for your one year anniversary. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, and uh, yes. and as far as the Super Bowl is concerned, uh, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I hope your team loses. My team lost before the playoff game started. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, All right. All right. so, so, I, I, All right. Uh, fine, whatever. <laughs> so, hopefully, hopefully, but I do, I do wish this for you. I hope you make some money. So I hope, I hope so too. Yes, thank yes. you. Uh, all right, Joe, thank you for being here. Uh, C. Michael, thank you for being here. Randy, Carlos, you guys are all awesome. Like I said, Rob, you're always welcome. Thank you for being here. And I will talk to you guys soon. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Right. Good night, Bye. guys. Peace.